know. How are you? Funny because we already said hi, but now we're saying hi after the countdown. So, I mean, <laughs> Mario Lawson, I know. Welcome to the private lounge. All of Thank you. Enjoy, the private Thank lounge. You. Um, it's so glad we're finally able to do this. I want to apologize to you because we've been trying to connect and I've been busy and I, I think I left you hanging one day. So I'm just going to publicly apologize. There's um, no apology. No apologies needed. You know, I know what time it is. You know, it's all love. It's all good. We're fine. You're so, so. awesome. So can we go back to what we we're just talking about, though, about yeah, Hollywood for a little it. bit? Like, yeah. and we don't have to name names, but this whole kind of concept I thought was an interesting thing that the thing yeah. I hate about this town is people will always say, oh, I'm happy to help you. Absolutely. Let's meet for lunch or yes. give me a number and then they don't show up or they, and you know, they never call or yeah, absolutely. I got you. You're the best. Yeah, pal. Love you. Mean it. Bye. You know, but, and then you look at, you're looking for, especially as a young person, because I remember being that, being my niece's age and her saying, you know, me saying, Oh God, I'm really excited about this. I really hope, you know, like what that, what that show, I hope I get it. I really hope I get it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, and, and then, you do stuff and then you're disappointed. And so, and I've had actually another, here's a fun fact about me that you didn't know. Oh, years see. ago, years ago, back in the 1990s, back in the 1900s. 1900s. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we are that old, huh? <laughs> we are that old. Back in the 1900s, I did a commercial for the Canadian Opera and I sang with some very, pretty, pretty, pretty important people. For me back then, um, I don't know. Do you remember? Did you ever see the movie Life with Eddie Murphy and Martin oh, Lawrence? Yeah, of course. Okay, of course. there's a gentleman in there. He's a really big black guy, bald, and his name is Michael Talaferro, but we called him Bear. Okay. He was the one that he was the one in the in the movie. This yeah. says you gonna eat your corn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Michael was a Bear was a friend of ours, so he actually introduced me kind of into the industry. So by me doing meeting him, he in turn. Uh, introduced me to Valerie. I can't remember Valerie's last name. You remember at Club Nouveau? Uh, they sing uh, "Lean on Me." Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the hip hop version. So, okay. so I ended up hit, uh, hooking up with Valerie and some other really important singers, and we sang a song and we ended up recording a commercial for the Canadian Opera. Okay. Yeah. So, something you didn't I know. I did not know this. I know. I did not know. Okay. And so Michael, in turn, he was a big promiser um may he rest in peace oh um, i was just gonna say you're saying was i didn't know if you'd ended your friendship okay. yeah no no he, he is no longer he is no longer in this life he's on to the next one um but while he was here i think i got um disillusioned by him because he was hustling to get in the game like through him i met terrence howard when terrence howard wasn't terrence howard i you know i met right. a lot of people coming up because they, they would all come to his house we would all be at his house playing cards in the studio having a good time but he would make me promises i just realized that the background wasn't on oh i want us to be pretty okay oh. go ahead it comes in have I, it was all about us anyway the <laughs> it was all about me you don't need the background i just no haven't um, you met me? It's all about me. What are you it's talking about? about you. It is about you. So he was uh, a big promiser. You got disillusioned. I got disillusioned because I realized in this industry, everybody's trying to get a leg up and they'll do whatever they need to do to get a leg up, whether it be using other people yeah. or, you know, or, and, and unfortunately stepping on people and bringing and pulling them down to lift themselves up. And that was a, a hard lesson for me to learn at probably I was 22, 23 years old. And I'm thinking somebody's really going to help me out in this industry and really get my back. But then I look at him and I look at his resume and I'm like, oh, he's he's in there. But then I look at his resume and I'm like, but he's really not in there because he's not working consistently. So you really don't have the connections that you promised. Well, I think it's also so here's what I always tell people, because. Being in this industry, in, in in the low level that I'm at, you know, I'm just going to say that right. I work for people who are in the industry, industry, but um, right. I think there's also kind of a there's almost like a rite of passage that everybody has to go through this. And I have met some big time people who have promised me directly that they would help me with something, and then when I called them out on it, they acted like they didn't even know who I was, like they didn't right. return the phone number, they didn't. Right. Remember. I remember calling. Um, there's this one guy whose name I will not mention because he's big time. Uh, mm -hmm. But we met at a, a a party. It was a mutual friend's like 70th birthday party or something. You know what I mean? 
And long story short, he's a relative of that person. And he saw me at the party and I was sitting there by myself, you know, uh, I didn't know anybody. So I was just waiting and it was a surprise party, a huge surprise party. And, you know, I was having a drink of like whatever water or whatever, you know, cause you don't make a fool out of yourself. No, <laughs> so of course. No. And he came over and started talking to me and I didn't know by looking at him who he was. Mm -hmm. um, but as we started talking, you know, he said, what do you do? And, and then I said, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm just a writer. And I'm like, oh, have I read what you've written? He's like, well, probably not, whatever. And mm -hmm. I was like, try me. You know, I'm not a big book reader, but he's like, right. no, 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 grips. And, and so he mentions at the time one of the top TV dramas on television that he has really? won. Like the minute he told me what it was, I started, I'm like, did you do this episode? Because I'm a huge fan of the show. Okay. Mm. Huge fan. And we started to, he was like, I can't believe you know the show. I was like, how does anyone, you, I could throw a rock and hit anybody. Everybody would know the show. And right. he's like, well, this is my family. I was like, well, okay, whatever. Okay. Well, then, yeah, there you go. We talked, I sat with him and his wife. We were chit chatting. We exchanged emails and phone numbers. I sent him a copy of the book, The Prophet, because we had talked to I love It's one of my favorite books. I sent him, mm -hmm. you know, because I was like, thank you so much. It was so nice to talk to you. Because I was like, okay, good. I made a nice network. I told a couple of my best friends, I'm like, I think I finally found somebody. Like he said, he would help me get some background work in this show. You know, mm. I wasn't even being like, can you get me an audition for whatever? I was like, can you just right. get me that? Man? And I'll tell you off air. I'll tell you who it is. You're going to be like, oh, unbelievable. Yep. And here's the thing. I even called the mutual friend because she was so upset. She's like, let me call him. And he was just like, I don't think there's anything I can do for her. Dude. I'm like, that is so ghetto. I'll never forget it. Yeah, it's chick it was really chicken shit. That's really what it is. Let's call it what it is. But, but, but I don't even know what the point is. Like, I don't make promises or I don't tell people I can help them if I can't, you know, I'll give no. you what I can. But you know, I can only do so much. Right. I can't. Yeah. But it's like, why would you say yes if you really have no interest? But see, I think people have, be especially in the, in, the in the movie and television industry, they have become so accustomed to just being false. Promisers, because until because if you're, you're smoozing, basically you're you're having a good kiki, you're you're net quote unquote networking because mm -hmm. they want to have you in their back pocket if they need you, not if you need them. Oh, they, that's a good point. Oh. Because they want to step on. People always want to leg up, and I've learned that the hard way. People um, in this industry that I've encountered, they they feel like you have to pay your dues, but who is to say what your dues are? Yeah. And then, I think, well, it, I mean, it, it might also be, it depends on what level too. Like there are people I work for who are good people and they would totally have no problem helping someone if they can, you know what I mean? Right. But I do think you're right. I think there is this kind of, I didn't think about it that way. Like they're, they're saying good things about you or connecting with you because they might need you in the future. Oh, I would love for this mofo to contact me. I, said, I wish he would. I wish he like, would. I'm not even at a level where he would ever do that because he's like, I mean, you know, like he's, 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 he is who he is. I'll tell you off. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I would love someday just because I would be like, because you know what I would do? How can I help you? Right. I, I would help you. I asked in a heartbeat because I'd be like, right. You're, I'm going to be better than you are. You dumb motherfucking piece of shit. Oh, sorry. This is your private lounge. And I was like, <laughs> We're having the real, real conversation. Listen, this is who we are, you know, because we can't talk like this with everybody. Everybody can't handle it. You know. I know, I know. Yeah, but yeah it's uh oh, I can't wait to tell you. I'm gonna tell you who it is. You're gonna be like, no, you're gonna be shocked. I hope I don't ruin the show for you. It no, ruins the you show for me. Listen, you have to remember who you're talking to. I it, I'm they're like, I'm not surprised. I, nothing, nothing surprises me. It surprises me when, when someone is kind to me in this industry. That's what surprises oh, me. Because, okay, and I'm so I'm so jaded. I'm like, okay, if they're great, if they're nice, then wonderful. I think that's wonderful. But I'm expecting something. Uh, I guess in a way, I've, I don't know. I guess I just see it differently now. Um, maybe because I've stopped pursuing the performing part on that level. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I made my money doing voiceover work and I did some acting stuff. But it's just, you know, it's like you got to choose at some point. Like as much as I would still love to be doing that on a regular basis, I got to pay my bills. That's <laughs> you it. know what I mean? And so yeah. you make that choice. But yeah, I guess yeah, I, I, I totally can understand that. Yeah. But let's start with you. Let's let's go back a little bit. And I know well, the private lounge is a place for me to get to know people a little bit better, a little bit deeper, a little bit more. Mm -mm. Let's go. What you want to know? I know. I, well, you know we, I'm pretty... we already had a we already had a conversation with you when you first came on the show. So that is um, on YouTube. People can look that up and yeah. Talked about some stuff, but maybe you want to give us just a little bit of recap how we met, 
Um, okay. I don't want to. And then also just a little bit about, I mean, I don't want to focus on your surgeries, but I don't know no, how don't to. that is about. But they are part of who I who I've become. So that's why I ask. I don't no, want. No, no, no. I don't. I never. I never. I never shy away from okay. my health issues. I never shy away from um, telling my experiences. I never. I've actually. I'm open. I'm really open about that because I've actually learned that by sharing my story multiple times, someone hears something new that triggers them to help someone else. That's right. I, perfect example. Like Rick. He's like, Maria, I just wanted to let you know I went ahead and signed up to be a donor if something yeah, happened. I'm like, that's yeah. simple. You know, I mean, that's great. Someone reached out to me because of because of your show and right. said, I signed up because I heard what you went through. Yeah. So, you know, it each one, teach one, give one, pass it on. I'm fine with it. So why don't you tell people what you're talking about? Because a lot of people don't know. I just said surgery. sure. Sure. Um, I was diagnosed with renal failure the first time in when I was 20, oh God, 25 years old. Wow. And and I got married at 26 and wow. I couldn't even, and I couldn't go on my, I went on a honeymoon that would accommodate my dialysis. So I had to go to San Diego. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, we and love so, San Diego, but you're from here. So <laughs> we love San Diego. It's great. You know, whoo, San Diego. We do. We love San Diego, but you're from California. So but I'm from LA. So right. you know, I'm, no, let me let me change that. I'm from Inglewood. That's right. Be specific. That's right. Inglewood all day, every day stand up. Right. So um, yeah, I'm from Inglewood, born and raised in LA. However, San Diego was great, you know, but I was so sick that I actually collapsed. At wow. the wow. San Diego Zoo Wild, the San Diego Zoo Wild Animal Park, we just oh, got off man. that little roundabout train. Yeah. Where I got off and collapsed right there as soon as I stepped off. Oh. So my honeymoon wasn't even really that great, but because of that, I was on because I was on dialysis. Um, I, you go through a lot on dialysis. Fast forward, I got my first transplant in to kidney transplant in two thousand September eleventh of two thousand. Right. Really? Um, September 11th of 2000, a year before right. the towers. Wow. Yeah. A year before 9-11. So mm-hmm. I woke up the next morning. I woke up that next year. Um, and of course we got the news. I'm wait, I'm celebrating my year anniversary and right. I wake up and then I'm looking, I turn on the TV and I can tell you exactly where I was. I was in my apartment when the first plane hit. So, yeah. Um, but back to this. Um, so my first, and for most people, just to be clear, um, a lot of people lose their kidneys due to diabetes or some other type mm-hmm. of, you know, major illness, lupus, so some, some, some many other things. However, mine was a rare case of I, I had strep throat a lot as a kid. And because I had strep throat, I didn't know that strep can lie dormant in your organs because if you don't, oh. if you don't kill it completely, you know, like perfect example, the doctor says, um, oh, sorry, is the doctor says, um, you have strep, take all your medicine. Don't skip one pill, take it. And you know, right. you're like, oh, I feel better. You leave the last two or three pills and you forget. Well, right. you, you, you feel better, but you didn't cure yourself. Right. So, and I used to get strep as a kid a lot. It felt like every three or four months I was getting strep throat. And so finally I was became an adult. And then when they did the biopsy, that's when they discovered that I, you know, the strep had lied dormant in my organs and, and it laid specifically in my kidneys. And that's how my kidneys began to fail. Wow. So, you know, so I didn't have high blood pressure, didn't have, you know, diabetes, still I mean, don't have that. Right. None of those, those major triggers. So a successful surgery, the surgery was rough for me. I have a low tolerance for pain. Um, so <laughs> needless to say, I was acting a fool. Mm. Oh. A whole ass fool, but that's okay. <laughs> I would be too, though. So I don't. I don't. It's not like it's not like it's just a little, like a little cut like that. It is a giant J cut. Right. So it's it's major. So yeah. So then I have that. Um, when were you working at City National Bank? Oh, can we say the name of the bank? I can bleep it out. What? No, you, I, oh. I, I worked at City National Bank. I, oh, okay. Right. When were you working there that I met you? Because it was after your first. Right mm, I, after your you first met, surgery, you met me probably two thousand. 
I was at Brand New School at, in in two thousand, but yeah, I probably didn't meet you till two thousand one like or so, right? Two thousand one, I think that's right. whenever we, whenever I think, yeah, I started working at 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 uh, CNB, I believe in two thousand. Okay, you guys, yeah, two thousand because no, is it two thousand yet? Because my daughter was born in in oh three. So, oh yeah, so it had to be like 2000, 2001. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was like, and because right. you came to the baby shower, so right, but she, she was still in the in the in the, in the womb. womb. That's mm-hmm. right. That's when I met her, and yeah. great my presence on her. <laughs> so I'm just kidding. <laughs> Being your light of love. <laughs> um. Yeah. So you worked as a principal banker over at CMB, and that's how you and I met. And we just became yeah. friends. Because I don't know why, because we we were on the phone, and back then it wasn't like webcams or anything. But no, we, we were just on the phone chopping it up. We had no idea what each other looked like, but no. we connected on the phone because both but, of us. But I knew bosses. you were black. You knew I was black. Yes. Yes. Black. yes. I was like, listen, <laughs> let me tell you. And I'm like, I'd look, and then after we would do our work, then we still stay on the phone and say, "Listen, you know, let me tell you what's going on." You know, that my supervisor, JC. I, oh, I never, I never talked about work at all, and we loved our companies and yeah. wonderful places to work. <laughs> I think you no, were the person that I complained to all the time because I didn't listen, have anybody for a long time. I didn't have any I, assistance, any help because that's when that's when we were just starting out. Yes, I know. I, was I know, because you were calling me to make sure the transfers were done. And mm-hmm. see, now, mind you, I was I was just, you know, um, you know, I was a senior senior assistant to, to the major bankers because like I was working for the senior vice president and stuff like that. So I was just your principal contact for everything to, to do your day to day stuff. So and my boss and my boss's boss were exhausting they were lovely lovely people i'm sure lies, <laughs> lies, lies, all lies. look at i i i ended up quitting brand new school i hated being there and i um, remember and i'll never talk to jonathan ever again probably you know uh, i'm in touch with a lot of the guys from there still but most everyone who was one of, i mean everyone who was an original partner of the company has left you're um, kidding. I was the first one. I quit on the spot. I was done. Yeah. I remember when you said, you know what? I'm out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. So that's we'll we'll do a private lounge and we'll talk about me, but let's keep you, going. You, 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 you. Yeah. So you you had your first transplant. You were doing so much better. You're wonderful. I don't want to get to the second part yet. I want to talk about uh some other stuff. I want to talk about the birth of your daughter and the love of your life, Alma, and just what I think you have a very different perspective on living, if I can be so bold. Yeah, um, go ahead. And I just wanted to ask, do you think having your situation with your health, if that changed the way in which you look at life, or if it did, does it really matter? Because you seem to be such an optimistic wonderfully beautiful person anyways. I'm, I was just always curious about that. No, I was actually the opposite. I was very pessimistic about life. I was very um, depressed. When I met you? Yeah. Oh. Well, not when, not when you met me, no, but I'm, but prior to that, like okay. when I was going through the, when I first died, was diagnosed with renal failure, I was engaged. And so I was, I literally broke up with him. And right. because I was like, yo, I'm like, I don't think this is going to work. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I don't want to put you through this. I, this is unfair to you. It's not that I don't love you, but I think it's just better for you to go on with your life. Find somebody who can make you happy. Find somebody who can give you everything you need because I don't think I'm going to be able to give that to you. And uh, <laughs> my wife, mm. said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving you. I'm right here. She's like, I loved you from the moment you walked in the door and I didn't even know your name. She said, she told her best friend, she said, who is that man? Because I'm going to marry him. Literally, she'll tell anybody that. She said, I, because I was working at Bank of America at the time. I had on my suit and I had on my trench coat and I was walking in to see a friend of hers. And I was like, is Diamond here? So I walked through the living room and went to, Di- to Diamond's room. And Ellen was sitting right. at the table with her friend. And she looked over at her friend and she said, who is that? Because I'm going to marry him. Oh, I, I know I'm getting like all te- you know me. I so yeah, yeah, yeah. The story because I just love it so much. But because I remember when I met her, she just gave me a hug. I mean, she yeah, 
you know, like, and I had never yes. really spoken to her, whatever, but she's just such a lovely human being. And the love between mm -hmm. you kind of makes me nauseous. I'll just tell you, I'm just going to be straight up. Like, that's Wait Listen, hey, after I gotta 20, be straight we, up. <laughs> we don't be nauseous because you know it takes work because we've been together, we've been together together for 29 years. Oh, and beautiful. we'll be married 26 on the 4th of July. So oh, I love this. That's so yeah. beautiful. Wow. Yeah. So I told her I tried to break up with her. She wouldn't break up with me. She she said, Let's we're still gonna get married. We got married. She was and it was beautiful. Um, you know, we had a wonderful reception over in Alhambra at this place called Manza Court. We got wow. married, we got married on the fourth of July. We had a, uh, we had an indoor outdoor uh, reception. So uh -huh. um it was at, it was at a country club. So the fourth of July, they had mm -hmm. fireworks there. So we literally walked out and we have we have oh, wedding photos. So nice. We have wedding photos with fireworks over our heads. So we're, st beautiful. we're standing on a hill with fireworks explosions. I have they're in our wedding hour. That so, is so great. Yes, yeah, so, and I have to pay for them either. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay for no extra fireworks at the wedding. I ain't paying for no extra fireworks, but okay, because we got them. We might as well take it back. You know, it's so funny because I, I I only have a few friends that I use as examples of like beautiful marriages. Like, there's no point in being in a relationship if you can't have what you have, you know? And I'm not saying it's easy. Clearly, yeah, easy. you guys have not had an easy life. No. I know, I know. But it's there's such a friendship between you. There's such a... I just, I, I love the friendship between the two of you. And I feel like your daughter has embodied a lot of it. I have not seen this beautiful child, which I'm just so disappointed in myself over it. But listen, listen, you, your, your announcement has been written out. I have your address and I just need to put stamps on everything and the announcements are already coming out. So your, yours is in, yours is in that stack over there on the table. Oh, I'm so, so excited. It's um, coming. But, but, but that's not what I meant. I meant, but your daughter seems to have the same spirit that you both have about life. Yes and no. Okay. Um, and and the reason I say yes and no is because Marissa had to endure all of our health, both mine and Alma's health challenges. Because mm. a lot of people, well, I don't know if you know this, but my wife has myasthenia gravis, so it's a. Muscle, I don't even know what that is, and I had it's, no idea. It's a muscle deteriorating disease that that can be that can affect her walking. She had a surgery when she was nine years old to kind of reverse it for a mm. while, mm. but it's starting to come back now in her later oh, age. So come she's on. having. So she's having some trouble walking and things like muscle has muscle difficulties and things like that. So, but so between my two, my second transplant, me losing me losing my first transplant, me being going back on dialysis for eight years for her life, eight years. I, you were on between. dialysis for eight years after the first surgery. Wow. After, I didn't know after, that. So I got my first transplant and it lasted until two thousand. Nine, so that's Marissa was six, wow. and I had to I had to go into the hospital on her sixth birthday. We actually oh celebrated, we celebrate her birthday in the hospital. So, like, literally, my mom and my friends and right. everything, they all came to my hospital room and cut cake oh, in the hospital birthday. to celebrate her birthday. So, so, so why? I mean, I know why, but now, mm -hmm. because you, but why did you end up having to get? Like, what happened to the first transplant that you ended up it's having? Not, it, it's it's like you have to go get blood work, you know, every three to six months. It's just check to see how things are going. Make sure your levels are straight. Um, I noticed some swelling in my legs. I noticed that my urine output was starting to decrease. There was like, you know, other symptoms. It's really, I don't need to let everybody right. know, but there were symptoms right. that were starting to show up. And so as I was going to the doctor, you know, the first nephrologist I was going to, he was not the business. He was saying, okay, just take some um, fish oil and some other stuff. He's like, um, he said, because when you're starting to lose your transplant, it's like a leaking, a leaking oil can, oil pan. It's like it's the leak is there. Okay. That's really he, that was his analogy. He said it's like a slow leak, and you can't really find a leak, so it's nothing you can really do about it. But you can take some things to try to slow it down. Okay. But it it was basically inevitable. So I I tried to ride it out as long as I can. I got really really sick, and I ended up in the hospital. And that's when they told me my I lost that transplant, and then I had to rush to do something to get fistulas in my arm, which is you know, I don't know if you can see all my scars. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I got a lot of them. Let's see. Right. I got a lot. I'm sorry. Wow. Because I want people to I want people to really understand. It's it's a I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. I got a lot of scars. Um, so they have to cut into your arms, put the create fistulas, which are sometimes natural fistulas are where they 
take your artery and the main vein and they connect it together so the blood from the from the artery pushes into the vein to make the vein larger so they can put the needles in so you can do dialysis. So just No, I'm just sad. Like I'm not I'm just sad that you've gone through all this and then I'm also weirdly proud of you. Like it's weird to hear you cuz I'm like I think I would have given up. I don't Listen, know. It it's a lot. It, I, I gave up a lot, you know, and it wasn't easy because at, throughout the years of being on dialysis, there would be times where I would, they would take off too much fluid. I would come home, I would collapse on the floor. There was a time where I fell down at the top of the stairs and almost came down the stairs. Luckily, Emma was in the kitchen. My dog, Nala, shout out to Nala. My dog said, she saw me at the, she saw me and she ran up the stairs and she came to try to, to nudge me and she ran back down the stairs. She's barking and losing her mind to the point where she ran to get Alma. She's like barking excessively. And that's not who she is because my dog is literally laying here next to me. So you, right. you wouldn't know she's here. So she was barking incessantly. And, and so Alma just came out and she said, Mari. And so she not only kept running to the stairs and ran up the stairs, running up and down to get her attention. So Alma caught me. She came and saw me at the top of the stairs. Thank God. Yeah. So it's just like, that was, that's just one example. There was m so many examples where, like I said, Marissa had to watch me go through transitions. And then um, I finally get my next transplant in 2017. Um, everything's going well, but now my heart is acting up. And I, well, your heart's been through a lot. I mean. Yeah, because I was on dialysis so long, you, most dialysis patients get enlarged hearts. So, oh. and then, then not only do you get an enlarged heart, but you also have, uh, I ended up going into uh, atrial fibrillation, where, is where your heart skips a beat and all that stuff. So yeah. I thought I was going to have to get a pacemaker or anything like that. So the doctors, I had to see a cardiothoracic surgeon. His doctor, mm -hmm. his name is Dr. Armin Kianquili. He was the best. He is the best man for the job wow. ever. Okay. I, yeah, I, I would tell anybody that. What's his he name was, again? Let's say his name again. Dr. Armin A R M I N Kianquili. And it's K H A N Ken Cooley. Look him up. Google it. Ken Cooley. Yeah, just look him up. We love him. Yeah, okay. We All love right. him. Um, but anyway, he went in and they had to do what they call a mains procedure, which, which is they have to go through like fine needling the, the veins in your heart. Oh, okay. To try to open everything up to see if they can they they can open everything up and then basically um they have to cauterize some areas. And to try to get your heart to beat in regular rhythm. Wow. Well, now, normally for the normal person, Dr. Kian Kui said, that's like a four-hour surgery. It's no big deal. Right. Get in and get out. Well, mine was almost 12. Oh, my goodness. And so because it was so long, they had to put me in a medically induced coma. Oh, my goodness. And, Mario, uh, I didn't know this part. Wow. Yeah. So I had to be put into a coma. And then my friends were there. And then again, we were talking about marissa so then marissa comes in and she's trying to how talk old to is me. she now seven six, no marissa's, marissa's in high school by this oh point. she's in high school the second one no right? no let's see no middle school because um i got my transplant in 2017 so no she was in middle school middle school okay okay mm -hmm. she was in middle school and she was just just freaking out and oh. she came in and just imagine you know not only do i have you know, tubes in my mouth, but I also had tubes out my sides. So there's yeah. tubes coming out of me everywhere. Like I look like an X Men cartoon. Right, so, and not um, in a good way. Right, and not in a great way. So, yeah. um, so she had to come in and see that, and and it. My wife said it really did something to her. Wow. Um, okay. Um, because th that was the first time. Well, it wasn't the first time, but it was one of the times where my mortality really came into play, and they right. weren't sure right. what was going to happen, and so. Growing up like that, it it imprints on her. Yeah, you know. So she she's positive because we insisted that she keep going. We insisted we're like, look, this your struggle. My struggle is not your struggle. That's your right. My, yeah, and I tell her your responsibility is to get to the finish line, no matter what that looks like. But you don't stop because I stop. It looks like she's already on her way because she's already knocked out. I'm sorry. What just happened, to Jay? Let's talk what? about it. Let's talk about it. My daughter got her degree from Pepperdine University. Hey. On 20, shout out to Pepperdine, April 27th at 10.30 a.m. at Alumni Park in Malibu, California. And her name was called Miss Marissa Luce Dawson for a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Integrated Marketing Communication. Boom. Wow. And, what, and how old is she? 20 years 
old. Wow. Old. Oh, old. wow. 20. That's right. She's only 20. She won't be wow. 21 until next week. Are you afraid of her turning 21? No. Because she, <laughs> okay. She's let, not a big let, drinker, right? So it's all. It's well, all. okay. You got to also remember she lived in Switzerland for a year. Oh, that's right. She's already an adult. She's done. Yeah. You know? She's done. So it's like, you know, you can't yeah. be disrespectful in my home. But, right. it, you know, she was away from me. You would never be disrespectful in your home. Look at her. I'm just Every <laughs> teenager tries it, okay? Okay, okay, but she's she, a twin. She's going to be 21. She, listen, every kid tries <laughs> okay, it. I don't have children, so I ain't going to say mm -hmm. a word. Listen, every kid <laughs> tries it. Not just mine. Right, right, right. Ask anybody who's a parent. Every kid will try I it. I just have such high hopes for her. I don't know why. I just, I'm always so... I, I think because I'm in awe of you and Alma, you know what I mean? The love you guys have and just mm -hmm. knowing you as a friend, just how cool and chill you are, even with all this stuff going on around you. I just yeah. have always loved um, the idea that, you know, she's perfect. <laughs> Marissa's perfect. Marissa is far from perfect. <laughs> I'm just far. saying my little clouded judgment of. Yeah, God, no, I mean, but you know, listen, but, but you know what? She's not perfect, but neither am I. I was not the perfect father. I couldn't, I didn't get it right all the time. There, and Alma it is does. not the yeah, but the thing is, because Marissa, it's if if you meet her, everyone will tell you Marissa looks like her mom, but she acts like her dad, which oh, is a, is not a good thing. Right. <laughs> I think there are some good things probably about that. I well, would love to, you know what? Maybe maybe at some point when she's if she has time, I'd love to have a conversation with her, get her point. Oh, she listen, Marissa, she's she's a little too open. I'm like, you know. Oh, really? She's okay, a little too session. open. Yeah, <laughs> she's a little too open. I think, yeah. but because you know, um, she she has been pushed, uh, you know, to 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 succeed, and yeah. because I think I I was afraid that I wasn't going to be here, yeah. so therefore I pushed harder, probably more than I should have. But I did. We did allow her to be a kid, but we also had to make sure that she was prepared. Here's okay. the one thing I do know. Here's the one thing mm -hmm. I do know, and I will speak on this, being mm -hmm. that I'm not a parent, right? Because I am the auntie of all aunties. I have six godchildren. You know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah. here's my thing. There is not one parent I know that gets it right. Because mm -hmm. being a parent isn't about being a perfect adult in a child's life. It's about parenting, and you got to do no. it with the tools you have in front of you, you know? Yeah. So and see, A friend of I think a friend of my no, it was my grandmother. My grandmother told me, she said, baby, um, she said, as a parent from the age of birth, from birth to 18, you are a provider. From 18 into adulthood, you are an advisor. That's Ooh, it. I love she, it. She said, that's it. She said, so you've done your, so, so I've done my job to provide for her up until 18. Now I'm providing more because she's done the work to mm. deserve extra help. And my wife are going to- Can you send me some extra help? <laughs> Listen, all I can do is pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pray for you, Carmen. Like, I pray for you, friend. I can pray for you. Well, I, I think it's, it's it's a tough time for kids too, though. I guess now, although I think a lot of them whine too much. I I have to tell you, there's a part of me that's like, oh my god, it wasn't easy for any because again, they don't know who they're talking to, so it's hard for mm -hmm. me for people like for people to be complaining. I was saying this the other day on the show. I have a friend whose kid is upset because they can't buy a house because the economy, the this, and they're like 24, 25 years old. I'm like. I, I don't know anybody who owned a house at 24, 25 years old. I don't own my house. You know what I mean? Like, well, I got, I got, I got it. My parents did. My parents are very young, and but, but that was a different time. I'm just different. I'm just saying, yeah. there's a lot of whining going on right now. Yeah. And the, you know, it's always a tough time to be a kid and then a teenager and then a young adult and then into adulthood. It's always hard. It's well, the, the, the trick for the one thing I will say about Marissa was that she took the opportunity to take the advice of her godmother because my our best friend jen is a financial advisor and a financial planner so she and she has done financial planning not only for herself but some of her some she has really big clients so she takes the time she's done it for all three of her kids all three of her kids are doing extremely well so marissa said hey Aunt jen i need help and she did this before graduation so smart so, so she did she did it before graduation. She when she first got her job offer, she and Jim said, Okay, how much are you gonna get? How much do you need to negotiate? She did really well with the negotiations, I must say, for her first time. Oh, for her job. She did really well. So Aunt Jen said, Okay, this is how much you make. 
this is how much this is your spending plan let's yep. and this is how, you know because she says she doesn't want to call it savings she says spending plan so i love it um, so mercy has that all together and she has a well we said two and a half year goal three year goal to make sure she has x amount of dollars saved so she can do something and i told her i said i don't want you to go out and buy a single family home i said i think it's important for you to buy a condo at least two, a two bedroom condo mm -hmm. stay there build up some equity take the equity out get something else rent it out have passive income so here's the thing though. I'm totally against all of that. I am against that. I'm, I'm yeah. like, you know, but that's the whole thing. But that's yeah. because when I was making my buku money at brand new school, I was advised by a business manager because that's always the line. You got to invest in a condo. And I bought my condo. I think, I don't know if you ever came to it, but in Brentwood, I had my two Yeah, I remember the Brentwood. Like yeah. across from OJ Simpson where he did not or did murder. You Whatever. Know. But, mm, we know he did. But anyways, uh, <laughs> we know he did. <laughs> It was right across the street from there, basically. And it was a, you know, 600, and I think I bought it, $640,000, two bedroom, overlooking the pool, gorgeous condo, whatever. Mm -hmm. and the economy, you know, that was right in 2007, 2008, 2009. And the economy yeah. went and I lost it all. And I remember I put down $100,000 to that place. Wow. Yeah, that was a big mistake. I thought because I wanted lower mortgage payments, you know, anyway, yeah. it yeah. doesn't matter. It was one of those things where you learn, you know, but I... I mean, I, I do think, I think it's good for young people to learn to invest and learn what to do with their money. I think that's a good thing. I don't know if the real estate market is as important as it used to be. Remember when we were growing up, you have to buy something, you have to build. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I live by the beach. I couldn't afford to buy anything by the beach. By the beach. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I, I just think, and see, I think Marissa's big, her true, her truest desire in her heart, bless her soul, is that she wants to provide for her parents. Her her biggest and she knows that she has Auntie Carmen over here to provide for too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All of exactly. a sudden, Auntie Carmen never been in her life. Auntie Carmen. That's how she got you. She got you. She got you. She I was there when she was in the womb. I'm just that's saying. That's it. That's it. She's she's working. I on love it. that. She. You know what? I think that's the way it should be. You raise your children. Your children should help you. You know what I mean? And and in this country, we don't do that very well. Yeah, I think it's great. However, comma. Um, I, <laughs> I, because I, because I said my daughter and I are so much alike, we bump heads, we get along, we love each other, but then we bump heads. And yeah. then, you know, I think that probably wouldn't be the route that I would take. You don't I want would, her to provide for you. No, I don't want her. I don't want to live with her. <laughs> she wants us to live with her. I'm like, I don't well, that's you. different. I didn't say nothing about living with people. You no. should provide for her, her idea. Her idea of providing is making sure that she she we live with her and then she can take care of she's us. Like you're in like your 90s or something. No, she's talking about like in, in the next Next few years. Oh yeah, god, yeah. Like if she could, if she could do that, I'm like, she can send you a know. check, but you need to. You and Alma will be fine living on your yeah, own. Yeah, I'll be all right. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Just put some money in my account and sell me something, you know. Then sell me something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know she met in a few years. Oh, but bless yeah. her. I mean, that's beautiful. Come on. And then she's like sending me houses to look at. I'm like, oh, honey, that's sweet. You know. Is yeah. she really? I swear. I, I swear. love her. Yeah. You know how many parents are watching this going, mm, my kid ain't even thinking of No, that. I mean, that's the one great thing because we've always instilled how important family is. Yes. That and the, and I think it's also very cultural because cultural. um, you know, on, on the on the Latin side, they believe in all yes, staying we do. together. We yeah. Do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But me, I'm not that way. Uh, <laughs> my mama was black, my mama, my mom said, You 18, you gotta get out, you gotta go. I'll, I'll my yeah. grandmother, bless her, bless her heart. When my mama graduated from high school, she bought her some luggage. So <laughs> I swear, I swear. And so my mother, first when she left Arkansas, she moved to Kansas to be with my uncle. And then from Kansas, she moved to Detroit. And from Detroit, she moved uh, somewhere else. I'm trying to think where it was. Chicago. She and then from Chicago. Moved. And then she ended up in LA. And then she ended up reconnecting with my dad, which was the biggest mistake of her life. But anyway. Um, she ended up with her dad and got married, and you know, here I am. Right. Uh, but yeah. Thankfully, thankfully. Yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. Be all right, let's change the subject a little bit. Let's change. I, I know we we could talk all day, but I just don't want to get some other things in. Um, okay, go ahead. All right, so we're, we're going to change the subject just just a little bit, just okay. to get specifics. I at one point we were talking about the color purple. You said that was one of your favorite movies. Still is. Still is. Oh, you know that's like that's I have 
three favorite movies. That's my number one. You know, that, that's right? my number one. All has, How all is has that been. possible that it's I, I think I thought you were just kind of bullshitting because that's no, my... no, no, no. I swear that that's been my favorite movie. Okay, can I tell you why it's my favorite movie? And then I'll yeah, go ahead. Because I saw, I remember when I saw it in the theater, Mm -hmm. I skipped school and I went to see it and I snuck in. I would always sneak in and watch a couple movies at a time, right? In the, Mm -hmm. the, whatever, the movie plexes or whatever they were back then. Yeah, the Cineplex. I don't know if they were Cineplexes back then, but anyway, whatever they were called back then in Boston. Um, And I remember watching it and it was like, first of all, the first time I saw all people of color, a story just about all people of color, black people. And yeah. then there's the line that I swear changed my life when um, Seely says, I may be poor, black, I may even be ugly, but dear God, I'm here. I'm, I'm here. here. I'm here. And that has always been like, that was my transforming thing. And then the other part is the controversy back then with a Jewish man making a movie about black people. That was such a big deal. People were so upset. And I was like, don't we want to, first of all, Alice Walker allowed him to do this, but let's just yeah. skip over that because people yeah. don't know the book. But I was right. like, I want to get to a place where someone can tell stories about people. You know what I mean? Like, but not- you know what? I think, and when I listened to his interview, he didn't want it. He absolutely Afterwards, did Afterwards, right. But I was mad at him in that interview when he said that, that if he were to do well, it Well, you know what? I, I don't, I'm, I'm not mad at him. I respect that because he knew that it really wasn't in his lane, but because they, because, but because they had a vision for the book that they mm-hmm. felt he could bring forth. And he did a wonderful job in terms of, of telling the story through the lens of what Alice Walker wrote, wrote um, versus the musical. Um, but he, didn't do the musical. he didn't do the musical. No, he was a producer on it though. Yeah, he's a producer, uh, but I think that was more of a guilt thing. Like, okay, so here, here's my well, no, he owned the, He still owned the right. That's why. Yeah, I love Steven Spielberg. Yeah. I know everything about Steven Spielberg. I love him. Like, he yeah, has everything. Here's my thing about him. He had said, and I this I do respect, he, he did Schindler's List. And mm-hmm. what he said was, as a Jewish man, as a Jewish director, as a person who, in his family and the Holocaust, nobody else could tell that story in the way in which he did that story. And that's what he was trying to say, that The Color Purple would be a different movie if a Black man or Black woman had written it. And that was his whole reasoning for not wanting to do it. Here's the yeah. problem with that, though. Sure, of course it wouldn't be. My, if I told the story, it'd be different than if you told the story. Of course right. it is. But right. he had the prestige. He was this up and coming. I mean, he was so established, right? Yeah. He had had E.T. and Close Encounters and Jaws or whatever. I thought it was the most perfect person. To, it's not like we had a lot of movies of Black people. There were always caricatures or comedies or, do you know what I mean? Like there wasn't, this was a substantial movie back then. Mm-hmm. A story about people. Yes. Yeah. And that's what... And so I was I was mad at him when I saw him in the interview saying, yeah, I, w- I mean, I don't know how he said it, but he was like, yeah, I, I wish I didn't do it. I wish, you know, um, somebody else had done it of color. Because, And I was like, no, that's not the answer. They, right. I wish we lived in a world where, yeah, there was a black man or a black woman who was prominent enough. Right. Because none of us would because have seen I, mean, the I don't think there was a prominent director. I think it was like Spike time. Lee back then. But Spike and- Lee was still new. And I don't think I don't think. Uh, Spike Lee had the depth. It, it's just not his. It's a different. That thing. wasn't his. That, that, that wasn't right. his lane. Right. And, and to tell someone else's story, I think because Spike always he inserts himself into everything he directs, and there's no way for you know he can't do that That's with that story. You have to be, you have to be honest and vulnerable and direct and be truthful in telling that story. Good storyteller. Yeah, and he's a great. And, and Spielberg was a great storyteller. He is. Um, I love him. Mm. I, he's I, a great I, guy. And yeah. that movie, that movie, and the and, and then when I saw uh, Schindler's List, I was like, my God, he's an amazing. Story. I mean, we always knew that, mm-hmm. but these were two really deep, profoundly transformative films and mm-hmm. painful. Yeah. With yeah. moments of joy, you know. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I have never met anybody else who has said that the color purple is their favorite movie. Never. Yeah, I, I, and, and, and from my my mom and for people in that age group, they don't like it, and I understand why they don't like it because my mother grew up in the South. She grew up picking cotton as a child. She grew up in that. She grew up in that environment. What she what you saw on screen and the violence. My grandfather wasn't violent, but she saw stuff like that. Um. So it just hit different. She's like, it didn't, it, it took her back to a very negative place. Uh, 
time, yeah. A very sad time for her. So she's like, there's nothing there for me. So she's like, I tried to watch it because I didn't know what it was. And she's like, oh, when I saw it, it made me enraged. It just took me back to. I have people who read the book too and felt the same way. Like, I mean, I, I read the book after I saw the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a painful story. I mean, it's like Schindler's List. I mean, I'm not saying they're the same. It's like, there are some movies I don't want to see again, but I mm-hmm. will never forget them. Like, never. Yeah. Color Purple way too I, 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 I watch The Color Purple and Purple Rain every time they come on TV. Right. Oh, Purple like, Rain. Okay, what are you talking about? Right. Uh, uh, the Color Purple, Purple Rain, and what's another favorite that's going to always come on that I'm going to enjoy? Believe it or not, the first thing that came in my head was School Days. Oh, yeah, school days good. That's Be- likely. Because school school days took me to my college years because I was just in college during that time. So I, I was identifying a, a lot with, yep. with a lot of that stuff. It was like a, some, a couple of things made me cringe. Like, <laughs> I need to watch it again. Like, like was, when, like, when Tisha Campbell's character starts licking. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't Wait, want to no, watch it again. Do you remember? No, I don't know. It's, it's nothing bad. I mean, it's nothing oh, no. too, it's vulgar, but it was just, it was cringe. Like, she's cringe. licking the part of his head. Like, yeah, it's gross. I was like, ew. Like, um, what? Yeah, my top three are Color Purple, Field of Dreams, and 2001 A Space Odyssey. Those mm. are both my top three movies, you know? Mm. And oh. I guess it encompasses everything that I am, anyways, right? Oh, but I got to put The Wiz in there because The Wiz was. The Ooh, first. The Wiz. The, 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 I got to put the Wiz in there only because, dun, 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 dun. yeah, because it's 1978. I was a little kid, and I my mom took me to see it at the Cinerama Dome. Oh, here, yeah, yeah, and, and so and you have to, if anyone who's from LA, they know the Cinerama Dome, especially back in the 70s and 80s. That's that huge theater. It covers half the. And it's like the in theater. a half circle. And it's a half circle, yeah. and so you're. It's almost like you're encompassed in the movie. You're in the movie. So. No. I love looking at this. And, and at my graduation, eighth grade graduation, I'll never forget it. Carol McIntyre came and sang, If You Believe. I can't sing the really? song. Yeah, she uh, she came and sang. Um, Carol McIntyre is, uh, I guess they call him Joey now, but Joseph McIntyre's sister. From yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock. So she yeah, came, yeah. I was in eighth grade, and she came and she sang for us, you know. And, um, and I'll never forget it. Like I was crying, you know. She was singing, If You Believe. Wow. In your heart, you yes, you know that no one can change, change the, path the path that you must go. I can't sing for shit, but you know what it is. Believe what you feel <laughs> and, and know you're right, right because, because the, the time, time will come, come around, around when you will say, say it's yours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love yeah. singing, even though I can't sing. I love That's it. Okay. And, no. and and speaking of the Wiz, I got to see the the show before it went to Broadway with. Oh, Brian did Brady you? And I did not. Yeah, Wait. and I, let me tell you, I talk, and I ended up seeing it twice. And uh, the the reason why is because I now the fun fact I was on Let's Make a Deal is coming out at the end of the month. Um, so did you win? Oh, you can't say. You can't say. Can't say. You can't say. I can't say, but yeah, I was on Let's Make a Deal, and I got called. I talked to Wayne. I told him how excited I was about being there. Of course, you have to be extra, extra. Right, with so Wayne Brady. Is it Wayne Brady? Yeah, Brady. yeah. You have to be really extra. And but I also told him that Alma's school was taking their kids to see the show, and it was the first time for their for a lot of these kids to see yeah, a actual show. And, mo- and I think I'll probably say ninety six percent of the kids had never been to a show before. Of course. And so I told him about that, and. He said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll come out and I'll meet the kids after the show. So we go see the show. Unfortunately, he got sick. He was sick that whole week. Oh, no. But, 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 Deborah Cox came out. Really? Yeah. I have photos. I have photo. I have photographic evidence. Okay, well, that's cool. I think that's kind of better, don't you think? Yeah. No offense, No, no shade. No shade. No No shade, 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 baby, but I'll take that. Um, like so Deborah Deborah Cox came out, and so did uh, Alan Mingo Jr. He played the Wiz while he was okay. out, and Alan Mingo was actually he's a Broadway legend. He was on he played in Kinky Boots, and he, I think oh, he won yeah, the Tony. Right, right, right. He won the Tony Award for Kinky oh, Boots, and God. he's also been on Doom Patrol. Uh, this is so fantastic. So uh, not only did I get to meet them, but the kids got to meet them, and yeah. they came and they stood there and they talked to the kids for about ten fifteen minutes, letting the kids ask anything they want to, and wow. you know. Of course, my wife said I was a hero because, you know, not only did they get to see the show, but they got to meet the cast. And so when she came out, you know, she didn't have a costume anymore. So I said, this is the lady who played Glinda. They're like, oh, 
Linda. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I have, to send awesome. you, I have to send you the photo so you can see it. So, yeah, no, yeah. that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? So those are your favorite movies. Those are great. Actually, those are great movies. I don't care about mm -hmm. Scorsese so much. But, yeah, but, 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 but okay oh, it's movies. nostalgia for me. It's the nostalgia for yeah. me. Yeah, but The Wiz is a great one, too. The, the, Wiz, the Wiz is great. Purple yeah. Rain is a must. It, I don't know it, how it, people don't. I mean, I love Purple. I, I saw Purple Rain a couple times, but it was so bad, the acting. It was so bad it was good. Yeah, okay. What, yeah, it is that. Okay, that's true. That's true. It's, it's so, so bad. bad that it was good. But that album. That it's album. amazing. Because every time Morris Day would come in and do this. <laughs> <my family. laughs> <It's so wrong. laughs> Let's go crazy. So what is your favorite? I mean, I think I know who your favorite music is, but top three. Prince is number one. Yeah. Um, oh my God. I can't believe you and I kind of have the same number one. Well, I'm also a big George Michael fan, but okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prince is, Prince is number one. Um, believe it or not, this is a deep cut. Lettucey is in my top three. Okay, I'm okay Let with that. Get into it. If you if people don't know about Lettucey, get into it because that woman's vocals are. I'm okay with this. Superior. Like, like I've got to see her in concert a couple of times, and every time she sings, it goes through you. Mm -hmm. And then she she just did an album a couple of years ago, and they were all Nina Simone covers. No, and, okay, that I need to hear. Okay, oh, that I need to hear. It is let us wow. it says it's, okay. let us be some it says uh it's, it's the Nina it's the Nina Simone album yeah. and she just does all of them. It's I love and Nina then, Simone. if you ever okay, another another favorite moment of Lettucey of mine is when she goes and she sings with uh it's her, Jill Scott, oh yeah, um, Marsha Ambrosia, yeah. and who is the fourth one? Kelly Price. Wow. Man, it was on I think oh my god, my god. Who else? So that you got those two, who else? Um Janet and Michael are are, are yeah. there side by side. I can't. I'm, I, I'll, I'll never put one over the other. I'm kind of mad at Janet because she's recycling this tour, but it's okay. You Why know. Why is she doing this tour again? Wasn't she just on tour just like a couple? Okay, years ago? let's 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 talk about Janet. Janet, I don't know what baby. If you hear me, I love <laughs> you so much. <laughs> and do. but the thing is, she did the Together Again tour, and yeah. now you're doing Together Again 2.0. Like you're giving me, you're giving. But you why are you doing it? Repetitive. Well, I don't know. You know, I, I, I can't answer. I can't tell you what, what people what people's motivations are. I mean, for all we know, it might be could be because it's the husband's time to have the kid. I don't know. Ex husband, uh, no. I don't know. I, right, right, right. But I, you know, as much as I, I love her so much, and I just it was disappointing for her to, to do the together again tour and then you recycle the same name. Even if it's the same stuff, give it a different name because give, give me a reason give it give me a reason to want to go because now I'm like, I don't want to go. You're done. Right. Um especially after going to Beyonce's concert. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. Did, did you, you do fellowship? No, I did not go. I don't do concerts unless I have VIP tickets. <laughs> Do concerts. Listen, I know. listen, we did not have I VIP. Saw it in the but... movie theater though. I did go see Oh, you did go to the movie I theater. I did go. Yeah. But see, the thing is, going to the movie theater, uh, there was songs she cut out. Yeah. That weren't course. that weren't in the movie. That weren't the only, the only concerts I've been to, which is not many, but it's only because I've gone VIP. I saw a Sting mm -hmm. concert. I saw a George Michael in concert twice. I saw um it's not it's not a long list. My regret is not seeing Prince in concert. You saw Prince in concert, right? Multiple times. See, and yeah, whatever. And with and now club. the interview is over. Bye. Listen, bye. Listen. Bye. Yeah. No, 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 no. Bye. You gotta feel me because you know I, I saw I've, I, I I've like seen clouds. him up close. I, I was like right here. Yeah, I don't I do was, crowds. Like I don't want anyone near me. I don't want like yeah, I don't do crowds at all. So no, I, one of my one of my dear friends, Randall, he and I, we we just happened to be at the we went to Prince's Club that night. That's when he had Glam Slam over there on Beaudry. Mm -hmm. And we just ran into each other and all of a sudden. Prince comes out and starts performing. Yeah, I had no how, idea. Okay, that's different. That's seeing him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 that is what I, I wish happened that I was. Yeah. Him I've that seen him multiple thing. times. But I, I but think, I would never get a con. Like all my friends went and saw Taylor Swift and Beyonce nope. and whatever. And they were like, how many? I was like, absolutely not. Not interested at all. You I'm know, not a Swifty. I'm not a Swifty at all. Yeah. I, you know, I, I went and saw her movie too. I get it. I understand. It's not my music, but I get it. I'm not I interested. It. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't play. Poor girl. Nah. She's a good kid. She's a good kid. No. Nah. Nah. Who, who's to say I would never know? Um, my, my daughter's best friend, Paige, she's what, what, what do they call them, the Swifties? Yeah. My, 
Um, no, I'm swift less. I think I, <laughs> I think she's a good person and a good celebrity, and so I'm all for it. It's fine. It's not my music. It's not my thing. No, it's, it's not my thing. And then for me, Beyonce is just queen. I can't get. Yeah, queen. she's up there right now. And and then like I was this like her this this Cowboy Carter album is is like is really growing on me. Like I'm listening to it. Yeah, yeah. Thing, but it's a it's an amazing album. Listen, yeah, yeah is a bop. Yeah, I'm it like, is. Good. Yeah, 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 the bop. Um, I mean, you can, you know, I listen to it from beginning to end. It's just not my thing, but it's not all country music. Like, no, it's not country music. But you know, I'm still on. You know, look at I'm still on. Um, formate. Well, what is it? Formation and yeah, like, mm, lemonade. Yeah, those, you know what I mean. Lemonade. Like, with, well, because I think you got a lot of anger, so you might be listening. I know, right? You can see the anger inside <laughs> me, but you got the anger. The anger. The, the like, lemonade help you get it out. What, what, what was the other one? The formation. What was? What's that album? There's four. There's the Beyonce album. There is, um, you know, the one where she did with uh, Bruno. Well, not with Bruno Mars, but she did. Um, that's a Super Bowl formation. performance. What? That's a Super Bowl for. Uh, yeah, yeah, that album. I love that album too. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 and then there's there's a Beyonce there's the Beyonce Sasha Fierce album. It's called yeah, I that's Am back in the day, It's yeah. called I Am Sasha Fierce. There's two albums on that one. Right. That was a good one too. That was Run she, the World. Yeah, that was um to the left, to the left, right? Yeah. That, um, that was yeah, I, that was he's a genius. It, I know people get mad at me. I'm like, you know what? I don't know what people are confused by, but she is a performer, she's a fashion icon, she's mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, yep. she's just an amazing storyteller. I, As I'm sitting here wearing Ivy Park, we just have her in. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, she has a new the hairline thing, which I have to try. I haven't tried that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm just saying, I don't have any hair to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do, I do, but I, I do want to try. But I'm just saying, it's like she's a, a genius, and I don't understand why people don't. Nobody wants to use that word. I'm like, I'm gonna use it because you people are all late to the game. I say she just look at Prince anointed her. I'm good. I'm good. My her her dad was uh teaching at Mercer School this semester too. Oh really? And I was really disappointed that they didn't ask him to be the keynote speaker. I was like, you have someone of of you know I was disappointed. But does I mean does he do a lot of public speaking? I don't know. Does yeah. He? I don't know. He, I don't know who yeah, he is. his website. I know his mom her mom. I don't know. No her, her dad well you have to remember her, well her, her dad also has his PhD now. He's Dr. Matthew oh. Mills. So that's why he was teaching. At, that's a great at, family. That's a great yeah, family. Yeah, teaching at Pepperdine. So and I don't know why people so all up in arms about Jay Z. Like you know what I mean? Like I'm like, oh okay, oh, oh okay. <laughs> that might be another private lounge. Okay, I don't. Well, tell me, tell me what the issue is with Jay Z. I don't. I personally don't want no smoke with Jay Z. I okay, think then. he. I think he is a great rapper. He's a. He's one of the top ten rappers of all time, hands down. Um. I just think it was a little cringe because he started he started messing messing with Beyonce around 16, 17. You know, he didn't start dating her. He didn't start dating her till she was 18. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He 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 got Beyonce pretty early. You gotta think about it. They because Beyonce is only 42 and, and Jay-Z is 58. Mm. So it's like 15, okay. 15. Yes. I know that i didn't know all that that's all yeah deep. so that was just kind of like best rapper friend, of all time where do you put eminem um i put him top five he's pretty good you know i'll give him top five um who's your number one pop tupac but we missed black man tupac, tupac, tupac biggie biggie um krs1 because he drops oh, knowledge yeah. that's right um i am I think Kendrick, what, what, what Kendrick's doing right now. I know, but I don't love Kendrick Lamar. I'm sorry. Everyone I know don't, I mean, no hate. I'm not. No, a big I do. I, you know what? If you take the time to really listen to him. No, he, he's he, amazing lyrics. It's not, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. There's something about it. It just doesn't, I, mm, it drives me insane listening to him. I don't know why. I don't like it. Yeah. He, um, but you know, he's, he's a wordsmith and he's because it's because, and that's why he won a Pulitzer Prize. You yeah. know, he, he's it's definitely, sure. he's, He's definitely a worse. Oh, please don't get it twisted. Just because I don't like someone doesn't mean they're not talented. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he's my thing, you know. So he did I not deserve that Pulitzer. That's all I'm gonna say. No, that's yeah. That's not, and it's it's funny because even I, I showed I just saw an old clip of President Obama talking about there. This is like years ago. They were like, um, if if there is a, if there was a rap battle between Drake and Kendrick Lamar, oh. who would you pick? And Obama Kendrick said Lamar. he's a Kendrick Lamar. He said he's a he's a great wordsmith. He said, but Drake is a great entertainer. Yeah, that's you didn't, a, call, I, you didn't call him a rapper. 
He said yeah. he's an entertainer. entertainer. Well, that, but that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's not a, he can be mad about it all he wants. That's like Madonna. Madonna's not a great singer. She's an entertainer. Absolutely not. And let's not even get into J. No. I mean, J. No. <laughs> But that's what I'm trying to say. Like that's I Drake. That's not that wasn't surprising to me at all. I wouldn't even put Drake in the top twenty of no. rappers. What did Mariah Carey, Mariah Carey say about uh, Jay? No, she's like, who? I don't know her. <laughs> me neither. I don't. Know. You know what? As a Latina woman, I want to be supportive, but she has done some real damage. I don't know what that movie was. I don't know what is wrong with this woman. But that, that, from whole, the thing, that whole thing she released on Amazon Prime was. Garbage. I, didn't even, I couldn't even watch it. I was like, I, I got I'm through the first 10 minutes. I was like, this is basura. Yeah, basura. <laughs> it's basura. But do you remember her from In Living Color when she was one of the fly girls dancing? I mean, and then she did Selena. And... But how about she was a backup dancer for Janet Jackson? Did you know that? Oh, I did know that. You're right. I did know yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, she was. If it's you, a little scary, if you, by the way, but okay. But if you look in the, if you look on That's the Way Love Goes, she's Yeah, in she's the, on there. And my name's on there too, right? My name Carmen is on there, right? You know that. Is it oh, yes, you got to go look at the video. Mm-hmm, my name is I, on there. See? I'm going to have to go look. You're going to have to go look at my name, right? And they're dancing right there. Mm-hmm. It says Carmen. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, Carmen. Right. I think it's referring to the opera. It's usually what it is. Not really about me, but um, oh, man, that was so funny that we went to Jano. How did that happen? Oh, my Lord. Oh, who knows? It's, it's okay. Scary. Okay. What is the most. What is something that has surprised you in your life? That people can't change. You think That's you think that is, you think people you give people the benefit of the doubt, hoping that they can change, but some people just can't change, and so you have to meet them where, or leave them mm. where they leave them where they are. I do notice that about you on, um, especially on Facebook, you do write mm-hmm. some things that I would. I'm always like, what happened? Because it's not that I think that they're negative, but I can tell you being like, don't bother me when I'm successful or whatever, because you yeah. don't show just, who he is. Like, I, yeah, because like, there's a post I just posted j- just the other day. It's just, it's like, I'm not, it's basically, I'm just selective about who I let into my space now. Mm-hmm. And because you let all these people into your life and you, and I'm, I'm very guarded. As an individual, I have, I, and I believe in boundaries. I believe in, in setting boundaries with people. I believe in, you know, creating a safe space for people. But when I let my guard down and I'm now vulnerable to you, and you take advantage of that, mm-hmm. then we're done. And like we, I don't come back from that. And that's the, I, I don't know if that's a good trait or a bad trait. I think it's a good but, trait. I think it's a good trait. But for me, I don't, I don't believe in going back. I believe in putting the car in park, letting you out, have a nice life. And I drive away and I look at you in the rear view mirror and you get further and further away till you're not there anymore. Right. Right. And I've told told my daughter the same thing. Mm -hmm. I said, put people in your rear view mirror and keep driving. Mm -hmm. And then they won't be there anymore. But the thing is, for me, like I've been going, I really went through a lot recently with my my father. Mm -hmm. Um, We've had a very volatile relationship where it goes up and down. We can be in a really great place, but then it can turn on a dime and it can get really, really bad. Wow. And Mm -hmm. so that's why I say that you give people the opportunity to change, but when you see that they can't, you have to meet them where they are and then you have to change and you you gotta move on. Um, Like my dad was here and after he left, I decided that we need a break. Mm -hmm. I have to give, I have to give myself a break. I have to give my family a break. I have to give my, my, my spirit a break. Yep. My soul. Oh, I'm the queen of walking away from people. Queen. Because yeah, it's a survival method. It's different method. when it's a parent. Like, it's, it's really yeah, no, different Yeah, no, I a can only imagine. But I just, I, I'm a true believer that one of the skill sets people don't have is the ability to walk away. Like, mm-hmm. there's, like there's, there's, there's the other side of it too, right? Where people be like, I hate you. I hate everything. Mm-hmm. And why are you coming and watching my show no, every week? Like, no. Like don't I'm not asking you, you know what I mean? It's a weird thing. People like to be in chaos, you know. They like. But to then be you chaos. have all of these, you know, finger, you know, what do they call them? Thumb bullies, where they just feel like they can say anything they want to to say mm-hmm. to you online, and then, but if you saw me in in the street, you wouldn't say that to Never my face. Never say it. Never say it to my That's face. Right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, I don't believe. But I also believe that people can be, innately be good. But I don't know what I don't know what your journey is so Mm -hmm. you might be in a different place in your journey to get there to your good to that good sweet spot and i 
but I can't take that journey with you. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes if you're taking me on your journey and I feel like my your journey is about to jump, you, this boat is about to go over a waterfall, I'm jumping out. I'm going to jump out before... <laughs> You right. all, you well, I, mean, I, I mean, the 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 blessing of being able to walk away from people is that when you can walk away from people, not only does it create a whole new space for you to breathe and to feel good about yourself, but it allows really good energy and really good people to walk into your life. And that was the heart. The minute I understood that as a kid, that yeah. I could walk away from people who were just hurting me over and over and over again, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a minute before it feels better. Yeah, like you can just go through the process. On the other side of that is always something better, someone better, and a new person to talk to. And I I think it's a great thing that you do that. I sometimes just feel sad because I'll see it on Facebook and I'll be like, who who did who did what to that man? Who did yeah, what? Yeah, I just I you know what because that's you know because I don't always want to be confrontational because I cut too deep, like I cut to the quick. Mm-hmm. And you know, and like as they say, they cut. I cut to the white meat. So you know, <laughs> I cut I to the bone, baby. I cut to that bone. So right. I just don't. I don't want to do that. So I, you know, if something it's hits me, put it on it's, Facebook. It's, it's, like, a re- it's a relief because I'm never really calling anybody out. Oh, you never call anyone out, but I'm like somebody, mm-hmm. something again, like no. Yeah. But see, but the thing is, you know, but it's also just a general warning. Like, don't, don't do that to me because. I'm a, I, have, I, I will give you the shirt off my back. I will do anything for you if you ask me to within reason. I'm a reasonable person. However, I do believe in boundaries. I do believe, I, like, for example, I had somebody ask me for money just out of the blue. I hadn't spoken to this person in a long, long time. And I'm like, hi, first of all. <laughs> and then, <laughs> how you been? Right? <laughs> how you been? Um, <laughs> And then no, I'm not giving. I, I I don't have it. I would I would say I don't have it right now. And then they would come back again. Well, if I can't have this much, can I have this much? I said, Well, I don't have that either. No. And I, and then finally, it got to the point. I said, I tell you what, give me your Zelle, and when I have it, I'll send you some money. Oh, they're nicer than I am. Yeah. No, they still waiting. <laughs> but now, <laughs> but now, <laughs> but now, my point was. I've I've given you what you wanted to hear in some fashion, and now we can move on. And now we can move on because I tell you, whenever I have it, then I'll send it to you. Right. If you don't receive anything in your zeal, I ain't got that it. Means I ain't got it. So right. that means you don't have to ask me. I think people tend to be really bold because they think like people have a perception that they think we're rich or that we have money or whatever it is, or, or they think we can get it. So then they feel I have never it. If I ask somebody for money. We're in a really deep place because it takes a lot for me to have to ask somebody for money, you know, and I don't right. even remember when the last time was. But but again, I think there's also a blessing in this because I think you and I are the kind of people that have people in our lives that if we need money, it's not about asking. They're going to know. They go, baby, can I help you? What's going on? Yeah, what, 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 are you all right? Can yeah. I help you up with something? You know what I mean? Like, And I, I feel like that's something that people don't have that no. we take for granted, maybe, because we do have people in our lives that would get that. And even if they ain't got the money. They, they, I got they're you. Gonna, they're they're going to try to fig- help you figure it out. They're How about that? Out, right. They're going to help you. They're gonna, they, you know, those are the type of people I believe in having in my, in my life. My circle is real, real small um, because, like, I think my best friend, she and I have been best friends since we were, since 1984, 85. Wow. Okay. Wow. She's the merciful godmother. Uh, we've been, and we have fought. That's friendship, though. That's a real friendship. Yeah, but we have fought and we have not spoken to each other to give each other space mm-hmm. but i love that woman like there's nothing What's i would if, her, her name is sheila yvonne brunson oh <laughs> sheila who's jenny jennifer that's uh that's alma's best friend oh that's right okay sorry i'm getting comfortable mm-hmm. okay. yeah jenny jennifer is alma's best friend she was my best friend um so sheila sheila mm, sheila brunson okay uh, my friend and then um oh here's another good story for you Go just, ahead. Changes, just switching subjects. So it's something you want to know about me. I do. Go ahead. Tell okay. me. Okay. Me and everybody me. else in the world. Go ahead. Some, something that's okay. Something about me that that would be that's an interesting story. I was with someone before Alma, and we were in a relationship for three years. Um, we had a relationship that I thought was going to be my future. And she cheated on me with my best friend who was living in my house. 
Oh my God. Oh my God. That is unbelievably bold. In my house. So, yeah. but but the thing is, I didn't know they were cheating in my house because I introduced this is his I don't care. Um this is gonna be okay. You don't want me to anyway, be out? Okay. <laughs> you don't have to put that in there, but you know, I just had to get that out of my spirit. You had to get it out. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so she I broke I break up with her. And next thing you know, he's coming to my house. He's coming home because he's staying with me. He's coming home. He said, hey, um, how's everything going? Like, you already know what, what's going on. Then while he's sitting there, she calls. And she says, like, she don't know me. This is the bad part. I call. I said, hello. Hello, man. Speak to you. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna save all the expletives mm -hmm. that so I don't have to just, beep them out. <laughs> you don't have to beep them out, but just know that there were like, I know you ain't calling here. Don't right. you ever call my house again asking for somebody else? Da, 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 da. Uh he comes home, he he goes back and leaves the house. Next thing he comes back, um, she asks for your stuff. I said, Well, she she can send me my stuff. So he comes back with my stuff. Dude, that's crazy. Why, but why are you coming back with yeah. my stuff? And I'm going to ask him, like, why are you coming back with my stuff? And then I told him also, I said, why is she calling for you? I said, I'll tell you what. If you want to talk to her so bad, talk to her from your mama's house. That's right. Oh, okay. That's what I was waiting to hear. Exactly. I said, talk to him. from Talk to her from your, mama's, from your house. mama's house. Did he leave? And he, it? and he left. So that let me know right then and there. Now, you're supposed to be my friend. I've known him the same amount of times I've known Sheila since 1985. And you do that to me. That's that was cool. that was some rank stuff. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the underlying tone, what what whatever went on. If you're supposed to be my friend, but he showed me, but see, sometimes people show you that they're not your friends and you miss the signs because there were other signs before then that were coming on that I was right. there were red flags that I kept ignoring. Not that I didn't see them, I ignored them. Why did you and ignore them? Because I hoped for better. I hoped for better. Oh, that's a good answer. I hoped for better. That's I hoped for better. You give chances, yeah. Yeah, I hoped for better. But the thing is, that's an, that goes back to my thing is, you know, people are going to be who they are. Yeah. And so, therefore, you have to respect respect who they are. But you have to be strong enough to say, okay, I see it. It is what it is. Rear view mirror. Bye. Bye. Yeah. And so, put I, I got to put a tune in the rear view mirror. Fast forward, they got married, had three kids. Are you serious? But the tragic thing is he's dead. <gasps> it, it, that's tragic. When did he die? Oh, uh, probably about four years ago. Oh. But he didn't make he didn't make 50. So about four, like four years ago. And it was so unfortunate because I got a phone call from one a, a, a mutual friend from my ex to tell me that he had passed. I was like, I'm sorry. And you don't talk I, to you're not sorry, but yeah, and what about poor? No, 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 no. I don't ever, you know, there were many things I wish on people, but death is never one of them. I don't wish, and and then I didn't, I didn't say you wished it on them. No, no, but I, you know, but but I didn't cry, and that's you know, that's the thing because you know, at the end of the day, they had kids, and I have a soft spot for children because children didn't ask to be here, so they'll be all right. I mean, I'm so you know what, as I get older. I know as I get I'm older, not saying, I have, I'm not going to say that. I'm, I'm say just that. saying as I get older, I'm like, you know what? Everybody has a story. Everybody has tragedy in their lives and mm -hmm. everybody needs to walk through it. Mm -hmm. and but see, the thing is you need to walk. Everybody needs to walk to, through the fire. You got to do so, it way. Yep. You, you know, and they, we all you didn't kill to. him. You didn't do I anything. Did not. That's what I'm saying. I did not. Uh, listen, they on the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast. Minding my business. So that ain't got nothing to do with me. I ain't going to bleep it out. I think they should. Sure. I'm just kidding. I didn't know he died. Okay, I'll bleep out his name, but I'd like the story. Yeah, oh, but, yeah but he, uh, yeah, he unfortunately passed away, and he it was something random, like he had broken a leg or something, and he had a cast, and his leg was swelling up. He changed the cast out, and he threw a blood clot and died instantly. That's sad. It's hmm. tragic. Yeah, you know, I feel bad because, like I said, you know, they have kids, and so I think his his child was um, still his oldest daughter was still in high school. I think. My yeah. daughter, my daughter, and their daughter are the same age. Yeah. Again, I got nothing here. I don't know but them. You, listen, I, 
it and it was and I was really and we spending you know, all this time talking about him and he cheated. No, no, no yeah, but it, it's a good woman. story because I because I want people to understand that if if something or someone is for you, then they're for you. But if they're not for you, then they gotta go. And then what'll happen? And you see what happens. Sometimes God will show you their fate and you have no and you're nowhere around. That's all I'm saying. I'm you not I didn't saying? wish nothing on anybody, whatever. I send blessings mm-hmm. to the children, but I don't. I have, there are just 8 billion people in the world. I can't care about everybody. You know what I mean? But it's my thing is, and my whole point was, there were 8 people, eight billion people in the world and he had to choose that person. That's what I, okay, you see what I'm saying? Like, so for me, I, look it, people get so, you know, pearl clutchy about our natural feelings. I'm sorry, I don't know the man. And I'm like, you know what? Mm-mm. I'm sorry what happened to you happened, but makes sense and, to me. And, and the friend that called to let me know, um, about his passing. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I, and then my next comment was, well, she jumped out for me to jump to him. She'll jump to somebody else. Nope. <laughs> See? That's what I'm saying. Like, it'll be fine. People have to move through. Mm. I'm like, she'll be all right. She'll find somebody else. That's what I'm saying. Okay, we have to end on the up note, on a positive note. Let's go. What, okay. is something, what is something you want to share with people? So I was going to do this whole question thing that they do on Bravo and the actors, whatever. But then I was like, I don't want to steal this stuff because then they'll come after me or something. If I no, they won't. It's, I've, yeah. seen, I've seen Vogue do it. I've seen... Okay, what's your stuff. favorite swear word? Fuck. Really? Okay. Motherfucker. No, motherfucker. M- mother- but just like that, motherfucker. Motherfucker. With an A-H. Okay. I'm Mother. A- yeah, M-E-T-H. Motherfucker. Um, okay. You die, you get to the pearly gates of heaven. What do you want to tell St. Peter, right? Isn't that what he says? He says something mm-hmm. like that. Uh-huh. I say, I'm sorry for all the bad things. I regret them. Please forgive me and open the door so we can come on in and turn up. Okay. What's another one? What's another one on that show? I didn't write them down because I always hate copying people. No, it's um, okay. I mean, just give me rapid fire. What's, I, I don't have any more rapid fire. Those are the ones. I wanted to ask you questions about pop, but we've gone way over, but it's okay. <laughs> um, um, Unless you have to go. You know? No, I got time. Okay. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about politics. Just mm, okay. in general, if you wanted to, wanted to share your political viewpoint of what's going on in the world today, not the world, but in the United States specifically. Um, the one thing that's bothering me most right now are these, these kids protesting on campuses. Mm-hmm. I appreciate the protest. I appreciate what you stand for. I respect what you stand for. However, comma, you are disrupting the children who are graduating this year who did not get graduations for 2020, my child was included. Oh. And I would be devastated for my daughter not to be able to walk across that stage. Mm-hmm. And because of some foolishness that you are creating that you can protest somewhere else. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling you not to protest, right. but do that somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Don't steal something from them because of something that's happening somewhere else. Right. That's really what's That's really my hot take right now because I get mad for the parents who had to sit with their kids in 2020 and watch them do their first year of college on Zoom. Right. And the and the mental health challenges. Graduate on Zoom. Some of the kids that had to graduate in Zoom. My daughter graduated on Zoom. Yeah. So that stuff bothers me. So for other kids, to other people who, number one, don't even go to the school. Number two, the other people who are. undergrads where it won't affect you give these kids the respect that they deserve i'm here for you protesting yes because it's right what they're saying is right on both sides they all have valid points and i'm here for a good protest just don't disrupt these kids who who have already suffered enough Mm -hmm. that's what's they're not even thinking of that though i mean i have huge problems with people protest like people are protesting and then you know they can't point to why God on the map, you know what I mean? They don't know right. where Jerusalem is, or you know, and it's kind of like, mm. but look at I'm 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 fine with the protesting, but I totally hear you. I think for me too, it's almost like um there's a lot of noise and not a lot of nuance thinking and th- like all over the place, not just with the students. Yeah, a lot of noise, not a lot of nuance, you know. But that's what we've become now. It's always the flash, the 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 line, the headline. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Nothing yeah. else. And then you and people get stuck on sound bites without listening. That's the word. Sound bites. They get they're get, they're getting stuck on sound bites and they're not investigating investigating to find out the whole Are story. Are you voting for Trump? Baby, listen. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, listen. I'm not happy. I'm not happy with either choice, but 
you know, but Joe, he's he's done the best that he could do. Um, uh, people are upset with him about food prices, which he has nothing to do with. And that's what I, I really believe in people getting knowledge. And like my pastor used to say way back when he says, he, he would always say, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Yes. That's because true. you don't take the time to read and look, look up things, you know, and it pisses me off because um, the white man used to say back in the day, if you want to hide something from a black person, put it in the book. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so if you, if you want to remove that stigma, read, it doesn't yeah. have to be, a, it yeah. doesn't have to be a physical book, but read At from Google. <laughs> Well, you can't trust Google because well, Google be saying, you putting can, up the you bullshit. To do some research. I mean, you don't have to go to the library to find a book or find your. No, you, but there, I mean, you can go something. online and start finding some good information out yeah. there, valid information, and get educated and uh, know and make an uh, educated decision about what it is you want to do. I, I keep telling people if you don't know enough, like I'm doing the opposite now, which I know Democrats are going to get upset with me. I'm like, if you only have one issue or you don't know enough about politics, don't vote. I'm done no. with the best people voting. I'm done. Yeah. I don't Especially, want everybody to be able to vote. And then, like, you know, you read online and you see some of these young black kids, and it's pissing me off because these young black people who are just so ignorant in their choices because they're saying, Well, I'm voting for Trump because he gave me a check. No, no he didn't he did give not. you a check. <laughs> he didn't give you a check. He signed it, but he, he didn't sign the check. He didn't give you the check, you moron. Like and he, just, there's no need for him to sign it either. He did it because he's an ego maniac, but <clears throat> and so it's just like they're not doing the work and you know these swing states and that's not even get me started okay, okay we're done with, done with politics we got we just got just a little bit little little bit little bit little bit what i just is- gotta say tim scott is an ass oh he so is he's an ass why does he's a black man it, it just doesn't make any sense to me that he's doing what he's doing and he is the definition of coonery oh yes he is and if you don't know ask your mom Shoot. Or Google them. Google them. Oh, 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 because they wouldn't know what coonery Mm, is. mm -mm. Mm. Remember Shirley Temple and Bo Jangles? I mean, do you remember that whole thing Mm -hmm. with Shirley Temple and Bo Jangles? Mm -hmm. And I remember because as a dancer, I knew who he was. But Amos and Andy. Yeah, like most people didn't know who these amazing, brilliant dancers, performers Mm -hmm. were because they were basically used as buffoonery because of the work they could get, but they were the masters. Of this trait, yeah, we, we yeah. lost a lot of nuance. It goes back to what you were saying, you know. We we don't learn, we don't we don't go deeper, you know. We just have those sound bites, and yeah, it's 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 tragic for me. And and as I get older, and I really want to see the young people win. That's why I always try to talk to Marissa about, you know. But Marissa's very savvy, though. You know, I got to give her that. Yeah, she can, she can articulate her point. She can say, "This right. is what I feel. This is why I feel." Mm-hmm. This is the way I. This is why I feel the way that I feel based upon the information that I read. This is what I. Yeah, but she's not voting for Trump. I'm not confused by that. No, not at all. But that's what I'm saying. Okay, here's my question. Mm-hmm. Another question. First of all, I love that you've become part of all about the Joy family. No, I am. I, I'm, I'm so <laughs> grateful. Um, can you share a little bit about what you like about all about the Joy? I love all about the Joy because everybody is authentic. There's authenticity there. There's joy there. There's fun there. There's laughter there. Yeah. I think no matter what we're talking about, you're gonna always find some laughter. Laugh- you're gonna, laughter is important. Laughter is healing. Laughter, laughter is curing. Joy, it it really laughter releases endorphins. So <laughs> it's so it's important. And I love that we touch on all the different topics that are going on. I always, um, I always want us to talk about what brought us joy for the week before yeah. you start anything else. That's so important. Like I can talk about this week. What brought me joy was watching yeah, my right. baby. What brought me joy was putting my daddy on a plane and sending him home. And But watching the baby, I cut you off. What was the yeah, wa- watching my baby walk across the stage right. in Malibu. Um and her them calling her name. Yeah. And and watching her be able to see all four of her grandparents stand there. So and, it, it, and then we and watching uh, her smile and just say, I did it yeah. in, in spite of, because for her, this was an uphill climb, you right. know? And so 
And then she's not stopping. She's decided to go ahead and get her master's. So of course, I like. It. I'm not even surprised by that, but that's beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah. So that brought me joy. My wife brings me joy every day. Yeah, and we even... know about your wife. We're over it. No, it's no, no seriously. I'm just kidding. Like, go ahead, give her some love. I'm just kidding. Give go her ahead. some love. You yeah. know, and and my like my immediate family. They bring me the most joy. Mm-hmm. Um, I love being by the water. So being by the like we went to Burton Chance Park in oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, that's one of my favorite places. So I'll go walk all the way to the end and sit on the on the at the table or one of the benches and just yeah. watch the boats go by. That brings me joy. Yeah. You know, I have my bench here in Santa Monica where I sit. I just love it. It brings me such happiness and joy. Yeah. Finding serenity brings me joy. I'm looking forward to our vacation. I'm looking forward to seeing you What are you guys doing? Oh, you're going next week. Cabo. We go in Cabo. Yeah. Who are you so, going next week? Don't you leave on Yeah, Saturday? we leave we leave on Friday. <gasps> awesome. Well, so, on that note, um, man, it has been so awesome to have you on. I feel like I didn't cover. I didn't feel like I, I feel like I didn't cover enough. Well, we'll like... have you back on again. What do you mean? We, we, you know, we've been on for an hour and forty minutes. Okay. Um, so, so wait, no, wait, no. Wait, shut up. No. I'm not saying <laughs> shut up. I'm saying I don't get to edit. I don't. I think I'm just gonna let it run. I might just beep out two of your friends, but I think this is just part of it. It's just getting to know you a little bit better. It's just having a little private lounge and people see you yeah. on and stuff. So, um, I am so grateful that you came on the show. And I love you. Yeah, and wait, we love you on all about the joy. But I love you personally. I'm glad we reconnected. Yeah, me we too. For a while, we yeah, were doing stuff, but we we're now connected again. So let's not let that fall apart again i'm gonna do a better job um, about that i mean no, no, no. like i think that's what i realized like it's just easy you're easy going right you're easy going there's no drama talking to you there's no drama. it's like we picked up like it was just yesterday we were talking that's and you know, that kind of friendship you can't take that for granted you got to keep those people around that just make your life comfortable and easy that's what I'm saying. And like one of my best, one of my friends, Rebecca, she says, now, you know, it's bad when somebody pisses you off because you try to go out of your way to be sweet to everybody. I said, I really do. I really, really do. I try my best to lead with love and kindness, but I am, I can be very direct. I can be very blunt. Um, That's not me at all. <laughs> I'm very shy. And yeah. I'm very shy. And <laughs> yeah, no, no, I am. Believe it or not, I am an introvert. I have no, I yeah. yeah, I'm a very I'm very much an introvert. It takes a lot for me to go out with people. It takes a lot for me to um to get out of my bubble and go hang out. Because my friends will say, Well, somebody will come and invite me to something. And I'm like, mm. uh. and so when when I show up, they're like, You made it? You actually like, came. Right. You gotta do it at your own time. You gotta do what you gotta do, you know what I mean? But that's what I yeah. love about it. It's a very simple, I feel like it's easy to be friends with you. So I love that. So I'm glad Thank we you. But listen, mm-hmm. we're gonna have you back on the show when you come back in two weeks, right? Two weeks. You're yeah. Doing your cruise, we want. Of course, you're gonna. You're always welcome to come on to the neighborhood chat. But we'll do another private lounge, and maybe we'll do a more rapid fire kind. I would of, love to do rap. Let's do rapid fire. Like we'll get rapid fire session. Just, It'll like, be so much fun. Yeah, let's do. do but that. I needed this too, though. I needed to get this kind of just flavoring out. This was good. Yeah, I, I yeah, I just you know, I I have a lot going on. Like I said with everything that happened with my dad and everything with Marissa graduating. And um, there's, you know, just a lot of going on, you know, but I try to try to push forward. It's hard. Some days I don't want to get out of bed. That's just the truth. You know, some days I just, today was one of those days. I was like, I got too much to do, but I got, you know, that bed was calling my name. <laughs> you know, if I don't go to church on Sunday, I'm, I'm worshiping at bedside Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Still worshiping, it matters. It matters, you know. So. Yeah, but you know, because that's what I call my bed on Sundays. It's bed, it's bedside Baptist, you know, missionary church. <laughs> and I'm I'm laying on my pillow saying my prayers with my eyes closed. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, are you gonna go rest now? Are you gonna go rest? No, I have to go finish packing. I got pack. I uh, have to I have to finish doing some work, and then I have to go to work tomorrow morning, and then we're gonna do the show, you know, and then I'm gonna. I'm and I'm gonna be on the road when the show is on because I have to go take my dog. Day. Yeah, because I have to drop my dog off way out somewhere and then um come back and then get ready to leave. Right. You know, so it's, okay. it's um, but we will have you on when you come back and you can tell us all about your trip. So thank you to. for being on the show. I love you, my friend, so much. I love you more. Thank you so much for doing this. And everyone, thank you so much for listening to all about the joy, the private lounge. We'll be back. Private lounge, private lounge. <laughs> 
Thanks for stopping by All About the Joy. Be better and stay beautiful, folks. Have a sweet day.